What is uh, organization uh, organizational change in general? Well, um, this is a kind of a movement of an organization from the from one state to another, and um, this change can take many forms, and it may involve um, change in uh, a company's structures, strategies, uh, procedures, policies, technology, or even culture, and. Um, well, this change may be planned uh, years in advance or maybe forced upon a, an organization because of a shift in the environment. Uh, also, it can be radical and uh, change the way an organization uh, operates in general or um, it can happen slowly and the way things uh, are done might not be as fast as uh, we might expect it. This all depends on um, how the organization is facing change. In any case, I think um, no matter what type of change an organization is facing, uh, change um, involves in the process of letting go of the old ways uh, in which we, we used to do the work and adjust to the new ways. And so um, basically I can say it's a process that involve uh, effective people uh, management, uh, involves in general like effective uh, people management and this uh, effective people management has communication uh, in an organization. Uh, but why do we need uh, or why do organizational change exist? Well, um, this is often um, as a response to changes in the environment that an organizational uh, exist. For example, um, both if I want to say um, an example, let's use United States example. The United States Department of Labor and Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development uh, they both estimate that the age of the workforce in on the rise. Uh, what does this mean for these companies, uh, for the companies in general, is that the organizations may realize that the, as the workforce gets older, the type of the benefit they prefer may change. And uh, work arrangements such as flexible work hours and uh, job sharing may become more popular as, um, as uh, their employees remain in the for workforce even after retirement. And um, as the workforce rapidly ages, it also becomes possible that employees uh, who are unhappy with their current work situation will choose to retire and resulting in a sudden loss of uh, valuable knowledge and expertise on a specific part of an organization. So uh, organizations will um, have to uh, have strategies to uh, retain this type of employees and plan for the retirement. And so a critical issue uh, that we can find in um, uh, is in many companies, and, and I can say uh, this critical issue is the is uh, finding ways of dealing with age related stereotypes that uh, act as barriers in the retention of these employees. Another thing that may um, happen, uh, what caused the uh, change in general, I can say, uh, apart from the aging uh, or the employees in general, is technology, especially nowadays. Sometimes change is normally motivated by the rapid developments in the uh, tech industry. Uh, Moore's law, as um, uh, Gordon, Ma uh, Gordon uh, Moore, if you know him, the, he's the co-founder of the Intel Corporation. He mentioned that the overall complexity of uh, computer circuits uh, will uh, double every 18 months with no increase in cost. So imagine how uh, faster they will be. Uh, such change is actually motivating corporations to rapidly change their technology and uh, sometimes uh, technology can uh, produce such uh, um, amazing developments that the uh, companies struggle to adapt uh, because it might be too costly for them or the age of the, uh, their employees is too uh, high so they cannot adapt easily to the new systems. 
sometimes technology actually uh, can be uh, struggling for this uh, for many uh, companies uh, and uh, I can give you a uh, an example in the music industry, like you remember the CDs, the first time that they introduced it was 80s, I think, or 90s, and they were um, kind of um, more uh, appealing than the traditional uh, LPs. Uh, the record companies, so they easily uh, were able to double the price and even um, the producing cities cost a fraction of what it costs to produce the LPs, uh, but they um, really uh, could benefit from uh, this change uh, more. For um, many years, um, record producing companies benefited from this status quo of uh, changing to uh, cities. Uh, however, when peer-to-peer uh, -peer fi file sharing through software such as, for example, uh, Napster, Emule, or Kaza uh, threaten the core idea of their business, uh, these companies in music industry actually found themselves completely unprepared for such uh, uh, disruptive technology changes. So as you see, there are different uh, situations, even for the same company that could adapt very fast to the change of uh, the materials they were used to uh, transfer the music to the market. And now they are facing a lot of challenges. So uh, what did they do? Uh, the first response was to sue the users of file sharing softwares and sometimes even um, they sue underage kids. Um, they also uh, kept looking for um, a technology that would make it impossible to copy a CD or DVD, which uh, um, has yet to emerge. It's kind of impossible these days. Until um, uh, Apple, actually, um, uh, they uh, brought up the idea of the iTunes. And with this new way, um, uh, they introduced a new way of selling music online. And it was uh, first um, very, look, the customers normally, they look at it very doubtfully. And uh, the producers also, they were thinking that the consumers would never pay for online uh, music. The music that is not uh, uh, as a, like a cassette player for a, a DVD or CD, the, how they are going to pay for something that is kind of artificial. It doesn't exist physically. So uh, as we see, it evolves. And today, uh, uh, we just uh, get the music mostly online. I personally never buy any uh, physical product for music or movie anymore. For movies, I use Netflix. So this is another change that happened in the movie industry. And uh, with the COVID, I think many changes uh, will happen too uh, to this type of industries. Another thing that caused uh -huh. change in an, uh, yes, Actually, um, I don't like. I mean, this idea for you know, people watching movies on Netflix because I really? like to go to theater and watch there. Yeah, I like movies, uh, movies too. But like, imagine if we didn't have Netflix or online, and during COVID, what we are going to do? Rent CDs again and DVDs. You know what I mean? Uh, so <laughs> actually, it's it in a good way. Um, online environment is helping us with the situation that we didn't expect, like COVID. Anyway, we need entertainment, right? We cannot, I, I, I don't really dare to go watching a movie in the cinema. I wait for it to be online. Yeah, I but watch. yes, yes, I prefer to go to cinema too, if there was no COVID. <laughs> I watch uh, most of my uh, mo movies that I watch in my life actually uh, watched on online or buying cities. But uh, when I, when there for the first time in theater, not long ago, a few years ago, I felt really great. Okay. Yeah, it's a, it's a good feeling. Traditional watching uh, new movies. But um, I think in a way it's more comfortable to watch it at home. I don't know, maybe it's me. I'm sorry, I have a call. I will uh, come back in one minute.
Sorry. Uh, okay. Um, so we were where we were. Ah, oh, the cinema thing. But um, I think I think um, let's say we cannot watch everything uh, uh, in the cinema, right? Just imagine to go there physically all this time. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, when watching online, it is kind of you know more uh, engaging. You can you know la you know when watching movies, it's like you can learn from it. You know, mm -hmm. you can more engage. But I'm talking about the social aspect of uh, theater. Yeah. Yes. But if you want, you would like my, uh, you would ask me that, uh, which one is you know more, uh, is, is more effective or uh, more engaging? Of course, watching online. I don't like watch movies uh, uh, with anyone else when I am watching on my computer uh, because I want to uh, full pay full attention on it because I I take this uh, this way. Yeah, so, I agree with you. It depends, though. For example. If you go to the theater, you normally cannot talk, right? But you share the experience with a lot of people. If you watch it, um, for example, Netflix, you can connect it to your TV. You can share it with the family. But normally for me, I watch it on my phone too. So I don't want to share what I'm watching with everybody else because the screen is small. So I do agree with you. Yeah, but uh, that, that is, uh, you know, on some sort of comfort, comfort but I don't know, I like watch movie, uh, uh, watching movies on phone, but uh, when it comes to, you know, watching movies, there should be a big screen, but there sh should, shouldn't be anyone around me because I think people uh, will not uh, understand or go through the same flow that I uh, would go. Oh, okay. And I'm, uh, when I mentioned that I like theater, I meant, mentioned the social aspect when you are going to your family or friends and, you know, enjoying things like this. So, yeah, that was kind of, you know. Um, yeah, social. that's true. At least it's like a hub for going out and uh, getting together with other people. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, I agree with you. Anybody else want to add something? Okay, so um, apart from technology, we have the idea of globalization, uh, which these days is kind of a question if it does exist anymore or not. So globalization is a process that um, it started um, uh, about five decades ago, I can say, and uh, it grows and grows until today. And it's about connecting uh, everybody together and using technology and things like that. But um, how it impact change for organization is kind of another threat for some people, some companies, if you want to say, or opportunity for organizations depend um, how they can adapt uh, to, to it. So um, organizations uh, are uh, kind of finding that the, it is often cheaper to produce goods and deliver services in some countries compared to others. And so this leads many companies to uh, have their manufacturing facilities overseas with, uh, for example, China as a popular destination. Uh, for a while, uh, knowledge uh, uh, work was uh, kind of thought to be safe from outsourcing, but now, uh, we are also seeing many service operations uh, move to places with cheaper wages. For example, many companies have uh, outsourced software development to India with Indian companies such as uh, Vipro LTD and uh, uh, what is the another one, Info, Infosys technology, if I'm not wrong, emerging as the global giants. So if you think about this uh, changes. Understanding how to manage a global uh, workforce is actually necessary and uh, many companies realize that outsourcing forces um, them to operate in an um, institutional environment that is um, uh, radically different from what they are used to at home. So it's a, a matter of the culture differences uh, between, for example, Chinese and American. If we think about the Apple Corporation that they outsource from China, how American system of work and uh, managing people is different from the uh, Chinese one. So dealing with employee stress uh, resulting from uh, jobs being moved overseas, 
and uh, things like retaining the workforce and learning to compete with the global workforce on a, a global scale are kind of changes companies are trying to uh, come to grip with these days. Uh, any, anybody wants to add something to globalization? Do you have any idea that you would like to add to this or we move on? Okay, so the last one I would like to mention that um, uh, what makes the company to uh, what makes the company to change is that um, it can be the like the market condition like uh, changes that uh, happen in the market condition can create uh, changes as uh, companies struggle to adjust for example um, like the airline industry in the United States is uh, undergoing serious changes at the moment or I think anywhere in the world and um, uh, uh, during the COVID, I can say uh, many airlines are uh, facing uh, uh, bankruptcy. In Thailand, uh, Thai Air uh, announced bankruptcy. Or, for example, after in, in the United States, if you go back in the after the September 11 terrorist attack, they actually had the um, uh, had to change a lot of things because the demand for air travel was affected after this uh, period. Um, so how they are going to adapt during the COVID is as still questionable and how these companies are trying to evolve, which uh, I don't think there is any way except they opening the borders and the COVID is gone or they kind of design something like teleportation possibly. Um, another thing that might happen in the market condition can be like uh, the use of internet to uh, book plane travels uh, that uh, uh, it made it possible to compare airline prices much more easily and efficiently and um, it encourages airlines to compete uh, on the cost if you ever use those type of website this strategy actually seems to be uh, kind of a backfire when uh, coupled with the dramatic increase in the cost of the fuel so it as a result uh, this Airlines are cutting back on their um, uh, their um, uh, kind of like the resources that they provide, um, and this taken for granted for many many years actually. And um, this could be example. Uh, if I want to give example, is like yeah, the price of a ticket includes uh, meals, beverages, and checking lug luggage, and it might. Uh, impact the different price of the um, of the final uh, purchase. Some airlines, uh, for example, Delta uh, Airline and uh, Northwest Airline uh, companies have uh, merged to uh, like two uh, companies merged to deal with this uh, situation. And uh, talks uh, involving other mergers in the industry still continues. And uh, let's see what will happen during uh, the COVID. And um, this is kind of external um, aspects that I thought a change might have, I might uh, have on a company. And um, well, um, there are some kind of internal uh, change that organization may face as well. Um, just I want you to remember that environmental change uh, normally um, is not happening automatically uh, and uh, it is not how the business works uh, whether a company is uh, changing uh, in response to the environmental changes and uh, threats depends on the decision maker reactions to what it is happening in the environment no matter what this change should be uh, considered to think about and plan as fast as possible so um, now how uh, moving on from uh, organization uh, change, I would like to know how, I would like to share with you how, sorry, uh, 
to communicate during this organization chain because this is one of the uh, most important things that we need co to consider especially in communication course so um we know change is always hard it's not uh, an easy process people need to change their mindset their personality and uh, adapt adapting to the new situation is not easy ever but um well um going through organizational change is one of the few guarantees in the business world and uh, I can say every organization must uh, change over time, no matter what, to adapt to fluctuations in the marketplace, um, to uh, be able to capitalize on new ideas and technology, to make improvements, and well, to adjust to the internal and external uh, circumstances. But we know we don't like to change people don't like to change i personally don't mind i love change but uh, sometimes there are things that you uh, become a habit and if it's for a long time people resist so change means uh, uncertainty and loss of control and it means uh, uh, unwelcome surprises and uh, the feeling that everything is unfair and change can mean job being jobless and unwanted moves and uh, concern about competence and uh, loss of dignity and so uh, organization change often means move um i can say like moving toward more work for the same pay at least i think uh, i can say that's how people feel uh, when organization change isn't managed well so it's not in all cases. If it's managed well, communicate well, uh, change will happen smoothly. So um, the problem is that change is not often managed properly. We don't even have, in many companies, we don't have change managers at all. And uh, they normally, if they face that problem, they just automatically try to assign somebody like, um, from whatever resource they have, or if they are smart, they would hire resources from out external resources. So from the 1970s to now, uh, a lot of studies shows that organizational change projects fail at the rate of 60 to 70%. And uh, there is no way to completely uh, remove the discomfort uh, during the time of change, but the right change management strategy can at least help people to get through it uh, better. A healthy change management strategy can um, guarantee the organizational change happens smoothly and uh, that the beneficial goal of change is achieved. And in fact, um, uh, Cotter came up with kind of um, eight step process for leading organizations successfully through change and um, he in general mentioned that change doesn't happen in isolation and it impacts the whole company and all those who interact with the company and it can include partners and customers uh, and not only uh, the people that are working in that uh, organization, even though the effect of change um, happens outward through the team and departments, all the way to the end user and the customers. Uh, so change management is ultimately about people. Uh, and uh, that's how we need to consider it. So it is about people who are affected by the change and who will implement change and people who have emotions, feeling and personal connections. The success of uh, an organization change is in reaction of those people. So communicating the change, the goals and the benefit of that change properly and the um, new role of the employees are um, expected to be uh, a crucial part of the organization change and to be successful actually and this is why the internal communication is the key success during the time of change and uh, why internal communication managers play the most important ro roles in this case uh, they're actually the one who create and deploy a change management strategy and uh, they are the one to communicate change clearly, effectively, and as 
uh, smoothly as possible. The uh, key to successful um, change uh, management um, are, uh, I can't say they are different uh, aspects I would like to mention here. And uh, I would like to say that the internal communication managers have a very important role in moving employees and teams smoothly through this type of change. And without the right internal communication ideas, employees become unsure and negative, and they aren't able to see the benefit of such change or even understand the purpose of all, it, of, uh, all of these changes. If you look at to uh, look at uh, if you've been in such companies, you would see that if a change happened, mostly uh, people are not happy, and the older ones are mostly resisting to change. So, um, in this case, uh, communication impacts employees' reaction very much, and because of this, uh, it can uh, show the outcome of the change. It can actually predict the outcome of the change. The most effective pra practice uh, in organizational change management is, um, in my idea at least, effective uh, communication plans. Uh, there is a um, survey in this case as, uh, as well. Uh, you can change it in a statistic, uh, statista. Um, in the second and third place uh, are effective execution of communication plans and effective identifications measurements and communication of the in, uh, intended benefits of the change uh, that shows communication becomes an important aspect of change management. So why do uh, uh, many changes initiate fail? Uh, that might be because of communication. So we are going to put the blame on communication and uh, more specifically lack of communication. Uh, so some of the uh, communication failure to look for uh, could be uh, communications professionals and uh, leadership have hard time delivering uh, those messages and messages aren't uh, delivered on time, uh, messages aren't delivered in the right format or through the right mediums or employee uh, miss them entirely, messages are inconsistent, and uh, communications aren't delivered by the right people. For example, a message is delivered by HR uh, that would uh, have been better received if it had uh, been sent by a member of the leadership team. As we discussed about the previous models of communication, you can see how this uh, might be relevant, that the type of the communication methods they are using, it impacts the way people accept it or resist against it. Um, so the objective of change needs to be clear to everyone, and internal communication managers have the main role in this case. There are different models for change management. I chose five to share with you because I thought it's um, uh, it's important to uh, talk about these models and learn about them. Uh, the thing is, there is no unique way to embrace change. Uh, fortunately or unfortunately, I don't know. The change management program uh, you are about to implement depends on your industry, the, your company culture, your business goals. So it depends on all these situations. This is why uh, choosing the right change management model is important. Um, when uh, driving an inspiring uh, change is a challenge that most organizations are facing today, uh, the times when stability and predictability where the main business priorities are uh, considered over. So the market transparency, labor, mobility, globalization, and things like that that I mentioned, uh, they are forcing us to get out of our comfort zone and to make changes within our organization, even ourselves. Change management is the process that organization launch to uh, improve current performances and uh, grab the new opportunities or find the key issues that they are facing. 
and it includes a plan, project, and initiative. Uh, so um, let's uh, go ahead and talk about the five models of uh, uh, change management that I picked. The first one is Cutter's change management model. As you see on the screen, there are several steps to it. Uh, this theory is actually one of the most popular and adopted one in the world of uh, management and change management. This model has uh, eight stages, as you can see, and each of them focuses on employees' response to change. The first step is um, uh, increasing urgency. By creating a sense of urgency among employees, um, we can uh, motivate them and engage them during the process. Also, uh, by building a team, we can uh, find the right set of skills and personalities for the team that will be responsible for driving change in the organization. The next one is the form of the vision that we have. Uh, it takes into account that not just the strategy is important, but also the employees' uh, creativity, emotion, and project objective are of, of high importance. Uh, the next one he mentioned, the next step is to communicate. He believes uh, we need to be transparent and fre uh, frequent uh, communications, uh, communicators um, as a manager. And uh, the communication might happen between the people uh, where the change is happening. Then um, the aspect of enable means to move things uh, forward to keep things moving actually uh, it means getting support removing the uh, blocks and uh, collect fit uh, constructive feedbacks from uh, different uh, channels uh, to generate here means um, focus on the short term uh, short term goals and uh, we normally think about the end result rather than that we uh, should set small goals and recognize small achievements during the process of the boost um, during this process that this uh, can actually boost uh, em employees motivation and morale uh, regarding the sustain what does it mean by sustain it means uh, to incorporate change it means reinforce and make change a part of the work uh, place culture and help employees to adjust and reward them for the for example new behavior and the last one is institute what does it mean it means do not give up change don't happen overnight and uh, there are a lot of obstacles that you cannot uh, avoid uh, we need to be persistent while the process of change is going on and uh, no matter how uh, difficult things might be but uh, uh, patience here is uh, the key why this model is very popular uh, well um, it's kind of pretty easy to follow and to use um, and um, the of my favorite part of this is uh, that it focuses on preparing employees for change rather than change implementation itself it means it cares about people more and the focus is on the employees experiences and uh, proper workplace communication and this is uh, one of the reasons that the, this is very common, I think, between um, uh, companies that they are implementing change. So uh, the next one would be, um, uh, I think I missed one. Okay, so let's have a break. I fixed this issue and I will see you in uh, five minutes or 10 minutes. Let's see. See you again. So I wanted to add the McKinsey model. That's why I had to change. Okay, everybody's here. I'm here. Okay, thank you. Okay. Uh, 
Another uh, model that is very popular in this regard is the model of McKinsey uh, 7S. Uh, he mentioned about uh, seven uh, strategies, seven aspects like uh, strategy, structure, systems, shared values, style, staff, and skills. Uh, as you see, uh, this chart is separated into hard S and soft S. Uh, it means uh, the uh, values that are um, implemented cause like uh, physical change or um, non-physical ones. So let's go through them. Um, for the first one, a strategy is uh, the change management plan that uh, should have a uh, step-by-step -step procedure for uh, or the uh, something like a future plan. The structure is the uh, related to uh, uh, the structure in which the organization is divided or uh, the structure it uh, follows and uh, uh, organizational structure in general and the next uh, of the heart is, is systems and this stage focuses on the systems that actually will be used to complete the day-to-day -day, um, tasks and activities uh, going down to the soft uh, three uh, soft uh, s i can say uh, one is the uh, style uh, the manager, um, the, sorry, the manner in which change is um, uh, implemented or adopted is known as a style. So the style is the way that they, uh, the company adapt change. Uh, the next one is the staff, uh, the workforce or employees and their working capabilities. And the last skills. Uh, is the competencies as well as uh, other skills possessed by the employees working in the organization. If you notice uh, around uh, you have six and then in the center we have the shared values and all of them are kind of uh, interconnected. So what is this shared values and uh, as you see it is in the center it's between hard S and soft S categories. Shared values uh, refer to the core of the main values of an organization according to which uh, the company actually works. Why this model is, in, is in very popular and uh, uh, I can say um, there are many other models uh, out there, but this model focus on all the important factors that the change may impact. Uh, so if you look at this, all these 70 are exactly what uh, need to be changed in order for a company to be able to adapt to the new situation. Uh, most of other models uh, represent some kind of a process or workflow, but um, this model uh, simply remind us of all the uh, business aspects that should be defined and redefined before the change strategy is actually Im implemented. The next model, I have to go through this uh, fast because uh, this can be very uh, lengthy. So let's go just to get the gist of it. So what is ATCAR uh, model? Uh, some people call it ATCAR, some kind of, uh, some other people say ADKAR, depends. So this model uh, can be used uh, by change managers to find out uh, different gaps in the process of change uh, so uh, they can find the effective training uh, for the employees and even though this model focus on the business oriented goals it can be very useful to support employees to uh, to be able to more easily uh, understand and adapt to the process of change this model stands for uh, five words as you see under each awareness uh, which is, uh, in general, the need and requirement of the change, like to know what uh, the company needs from you and uh, what do you need to know and uh, learn in order to adapt to change. The next one is um, it's okay. Uh, the next one is um, what did you miss, Kamran? So, okay, you uh, actually, I, yeah, I, I lost for last two, three minutes. Oh, okay, it's okay. So I'm just talking about this model. 
And uh, I'm going through each one of these letters as you see each part of this model. So the first one is awareness. This is generally uh, to know the need and the requirement for change. The desire is uh, to bring a part and be part of the change, knowledge of how to drive the change, ability to uh, like incorporate the change on a regular basis and are for reinforcement to keep it uh, implemented and reinforced like um, other as aspects as well. Why did I choose this one and why many are choosing this model is that this change management model is very good solution for, um, sorry, let me check the message. Ah, you, what happened? A uh, minute around six. Okay, no problem, camera. It's okay. So, um, why I chose this model, why I think it's interesting is because it's a great solution for companies that are trying to look uh, at both uh, the business and people dimension of change. Uh, like other mo management models, this model focused uh, on the identification and evaluation of the reason why change is working or not, and why um, uh, desired results, wanted results are not being obtained. So they normally look for uh, what is the problem. Another model I would like to share is um, a cobbler, if it moves. Coupler Russ, uh, five stage of change uh, model. Uh, this looks a little bit complicated, but it's not. It depends on um, how you look at it. I simply tell you that this model is different from the others in a sense that it's a hundred percent employee oriented, and the model also can be applied to other situation like a loss of job or uh, changes in work or other less serious health condition. Um, this model helps employers um, understand better their employees and empathize with them, which is very important in the aspect of communication. Uh, this model um, uh, have five stages, as you see, and uh, uh, they are focused on the employee and how they uh, look at the change. The first stage uh, in this model is, uh, denial. It is when the employees are not willing or to or they are unable to accept change. This happens because most people show resistance, as we stated earlier, toward change and they not want to believe what is happening. Uh, the next stage is anger. Uh, it is um, where uh, the model assumes that uh, when the news first get absorbed, anger flows. Um, a denial converts into anger when employees realize that the change is actually happening and they cannot do anything about it. Uh, the third stage would be bargaining. During this stage, uh, employees try to get uh, to the best possible solution out of the situation uh, they are facing. Uh, bargaining is a way for people to avoid ending up with the worst case scenario. Uh, the fourth one is depression. It's when uh, employees realize that uh, the previous stage didn't work uh, and they may end up uh, getting depressed and may lose faith uh, and motivation. Some of the symptoms includes, includes uh, low energy, uh, lack of commitment uh, and motivation, lack of any kind of excitement or happiness. And the last stage is acceptance, finally. Uh, it is when they realize that there is no point in fighting change anymore, and they may finally accept what is happening and uh, may begin to uh, kind of resign to it. So why I like this model is that because uh, of his focus on employees again, as you see, all the models I chose are employee focus, they are very, hum uh, very much more humanistic. This model focuses on the employee feeling, concern, and needs. Uh, and the organization that they um, that manage to understand their employees, uh, as we discussed with Cameron earlier, are much more likely to, uh, to remove some of the biggest uh, barriers towards successful change management. So this is actually because most employees go through the above mentioned feelings 
uh, it is extremely important to keep employees informed and have them uh, have kind of an eff effective communication, business communication strategy in this case. And then let's go to the uh, last one, which is quite popular. Many people might talk about it, the unfreeze, change, refreeze model of levy. Um, this is uh, actually uh, helps companies better understand uh, organizational and structural change and um, consists of three main stages. It looks simple and it is actually simple. The unfreeze stage is the preparation stage where uh, normally managers or employers um, must get uh, ready for the change. And this is the important step uh, and uh, if the employee want to um, uh, enhance open uh, employee communications, uh, explaining why change is necessary, this is the step they have to do it. The goal is to actually overcome employees resistance to change as much as possible. So the goal of this step. Then the change happen. In this step, um, uh, change gets implemented. They are uh, putting in practice. Uh, they continue the first stage. Uh, and um, here the good leadership and effective employee communication are crucial. And the last step is refreeze. It is uh, the stage where um, change is accepted and employees uh, go back to their routine. Uh, this stage should be considered as most overgoing, uh, mo sorry, most ever going and uh, leaders uh, should make sure that the uh, changes are adopted and um, um, even I can say used uh, after the change management ob objectives have been achieved. So um, my favorite part of this model is um, uh, how uh, this model describes only three steps, very simply, very un, uh, easily understandable. And um, it's kind of a pre-change, during change and post-change process. And because of this simplicity, uh, I can say many organizations choose to follow this model uh, when they are implementing change. So these are the five um, uh, models that I chose. Uh, and before I give ex example uh, of one of these models, I would like to uh, know more about your idea on this. Which one do you prefer? Which one do you think is more interesting? If you can share your ideas, please. Anybody? Do you have any questions? Internet is disconnected and, uh, you know, it is still, I don't know, interrupting. I, I you know, you have a problem with, with the sound or is mine? Mista, is my sound clear? Sorry, I'm, I'm uh, uh, not communicating on chat. I think oh. it is better because I can't hear you because of my internet. Okay, okay. Mista, are you there? Mista, are not there. Okay, you can type in chat if you have any question about this. So let's move on and uh, try to finish it. Uh, I chose um, an example for uh, COVID actually using one of these models. I chose... Hi, can you hear me? Yes. I can hear you, but it's uh, cutting. I hope it's not my side. Actually, I, I was disconnected. Uh, my internet was. Uh, okay. I understood that. Uh, but uh, is it your internet or you think? It's yes, it is on my side. My, my Actually, now I have to be used by mobile data. Yeah, I cannot hear you properly. Uh, no. sure. Would you like to type it? Uh, I'll check the part that. I missed no problem. Um, I will get. Can you type? Maybe I can explain. 
Sorry, your internet is uh, kind of, I hope it's not my side. Okay, so yeah, what was yes. it? is my internet okay? Yes, yes, okay. Oh, okay, because uh, Kamran has problem with his internet. He couldn't, uh, it was disconnected and he couldn't hear. I thought, I hope it's not mine. No, no, I think it's from his side. I have been hearing clearly, yeah. Okay. So, um, I give you one example using uh, McKinsey uh, 7S change management. If you remember, let's go back there. This one, and um, uh, as I mentioned about this uh, model, I would like to apply it to the real world situation and especially the COVID-19 uh, pandemic. So how this, um, model can be adapted during this situation. First of all, we see an increased uh, urgency uh, in uh, manner of uh, implementing change. Here, employers are responsible for creating urgency about the change. And in this situation, urgency around following safety guidelines or something like new policies, procedures, and tips for working from home is important for employers to uh, ensure their business continuity. So if the uh, businesses do not have this, uh, do not implement this mindset of urgency or they do not have it themselves, so they might fail, uh, face failure. Another thing is the idea of uh, building the team in charge of uh, driving change uh, in this situation. Depending on a situation, uh, this team uh, may include different departments. Uh, however, um, getting internal communication department on board is not an option. Uh, I think it is an absolute uh, must to do. You're in, okay, hi. <laughs> In this case, I think uh, other members of the team should include change management uh, team, uh, can be uh, crisis management and communication team, leaders, managers, and uh, human resource department. They are all responsible for making sure that employees uh, stay connected, uh, inspired, and productive, even when uh, they may be physically separated and um, dispersed. Uh, Along from this, uh, we need to make sure the employees as manager, we need to make sure employees um, are um, aligned with uh, our vision. Uh, when uh, change communication plan um, uh, should have, um, I can say, uh, let me rephrase it. Um, your uh, change communication plan in this situation should have a clear vision about the change as we said in this model. Uh, also, it should um, include uh, clear goals in uh, order for employees to understand how to work together towards those goals. Um, setting this clear vision is the only way to get the employees um, to, uh, to um, work properly and we be able to align with them. Uh, um, and uh, everybody are aligned with the main objective of the of the change. For example, um, one of the change management goals here might be uh, around how to ensure that employees uh, return to work safety, uh, if the companies even care. Um, the next one I, I can mention in this case is uh, communicate change management strategy to the employees. Uh, once we define our vision and goals, it is important that uh, we communicate them often and, uh, of course, in a mode of transparency and openly with uh, the entire uh, workforce, even when uh, we don't have the best news to share. So uh, being uh, straightforward is, is very important. Uh, well, um, many organizations, we know that they are going uh, under uh, a lot of significant cuts and employee layoff, unfortunately, as the result of the current world situation. Um, instead of leaving your uh, employees in the dark, you 
actually uh, the employers uh, need to make sure that they have access to the important information and updates. No matter what, um, the change management model you choose, any of these, communicating the benefits and the consequences of change should always be the priority for the management managers. Now, in order for, uh, for a manager to be able to communicate properly um, during the change uh, is uh, a few questions uh, to be asked, I think. It's, uh, it can be the easiest way to explain this part is that um, for change communication plan, you should ask these questions uh, from yourself first. What does change uh, include? What are the goals uh, in this change, how employees' role may be impacted, or uh, what is the time frame for it, uh, where to find uh, the important company updates, how to communicate change, and uh, how to make sure employees embrace change. These are the questions that if you ask yourself as a manager, uh, you can find uh, it's kind of an, um, uh, the way that you can plan and strategize uh, change the way that it moves toward what is needed to be done. So uh, when we are implementing changes, it's important to um, support the employees uh, constantly in this situation in order to uh, be able to um, help them to accept resistance and remove those roadblocks that they may face today. Actually, um, in these days, uh, the best support we can um, have if you are in the management or leadership position is to give the employees um, uh, uh, the, like the keeping them connected and uh, help them to share their voice uh, in two way com communication channels. Um, we mentioned about two way communication channels earlier and last week. Uh, this um, need to be the way that it allows um, employees to ask questions, raise, raise concerns and join daily com uh, conversations in the company. And uh, it shouldn't be like just sending a ma uh, mass email announcement, something like that, and hope that they will read your message. It shouldn't be like that. These are uh, the the COVID actually is a time that the many employees are experiencing uh, extensive information overload and uh, so uh, we should be careful the employee as an empl uh, employee manager be careful about only sending relevant and personal information in order to uh, get the employees uh, attention so it should be very precise very clear cut uh, very open and uh, two-way uh, two-way uh, based the communication.